Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to an awesome Monday and today I'm going to show you how to make this really cool Rick and Morty portal. This is in celebration of Rick and Morty finally premiering last night, season 3. It was awesome! What a what? <sighs> I need to be more hip than that. Anyways, um, as you can see, this is the effect that we're going to create, all made with an After Effects. Not a problem whatsoever. Also, for the record, this is my very first tutorial. Um, I've never done one before, and so if I ramble on, if I'm going too fast or too slow, I do apologize in advance. This is like my seventh attempt, like my seventh practice of, of trying to make this as compact as possible. Okay, so let's just get started. Um, but before we do that, let me just show you. This was the one that I made, and this is another one that I made. And this was the very first one that I made. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because I don't want you to think when you watch tutorials, the person who made the tutorial automatically knew what to do from the beginning. That is not true. That's a myth. Uh, I always, it's always trial and error. Like if I were to go to my elements, these are the many drafts that I did. I made so many streak elements, which made this one, but I ultimately decided on this one. And it's only was made with one element. Okay, and the same process I made with this, I made this, I made this as well. And you can see, even though both are similar, uh, both are, um, you know, both are really different. Because when dealing with fractal noise and turbulent displacement, um, it's really, it's really random. So even though you're following along, you're going to get a different effect, which is why I love turbulent displacement and fractal noise. Anything that deals with noise. Okay, it's very After Effects friendly, no plugins needed. Let's get started. So we're just gonna click exit here. We have our tut folder already selected. We're gonna go to new composition or press control N and we want our box to be 1200 by 1200. We want it to be a perfect square. And we're gonna have it a minute and 20. Um, I'm just going to, yeah, we're gonna have it a minute and 20 seconds. I like that. And you'll know why in a second. And we're just going to call this streak element. Click OK. And now we have our empty composition. Now we want to create a star shape layer. OK. And there are many shape layers. We have our text, solid, light, camera, null, etc., etc. Um, we want to create a shape layer. And to do that, we want to highlight on our predefined shapes here, which is right next to the pan behind tool. Highlight that and we want to select a star and now we are left clicking on the layer on, on on the shape tools and we want to just highlight over star Star tool let go and now we have our star selected one double click on the star And now we have a perfect star now now if your layer is going out of bounds We just want to scroll here Go to fit and now everything is fit now as you can see our star is a bit is a bit wide so we don't want that. We want to uh, first rename our shape layer to streak. Then you want to go to polystar and go to polystar path. Now, when creating a star, um, there are many. You have what you call polystar options, and you'll see over here we have points, position, inner radius, outer radius. These predefined um, parameters may be different on yours. So just follow along with the look, and it's all about fiddling around with the settings. There is no exact way to do to, to do things. So we want to go to the inner radius and just bring the points like this. We want to go to let's see that. Go to go to inner roundness. Go to outer roundness. Uh, maybe not that. That's fine. Outer roundness. That looks good. Something like that. Uh, bring it like that. I'm gonna go to our position and just position it like so. And outer radius, you just want to bring that down so it's not too close to the edges. Um, in around us, just bring that in a bit. And now we are good. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to go to our display. We want to, we want, we want to make an adjustment layer. Uh, let me slow down. You want to go to what you want to right click on your comp on your composition timeline. Or you can just go to, you know, layer atop here, go to new and adjustment layer, right? 
But you, but you can also right click here and then go to new adjustment layer. Okay, but you know, just showing you where, just showing you many options. You want to highlight our adjustment layer, click enter, and name it displacement. Now with our displacement layer selected, you want to go to our effects control. Now let's say the effects control is not there. You want to go to window. You want to go to your effects control and we see it here and we want to click it and now our effects control window is there. Okay. And the name for the effects control will vary. So if you have the displacement selected, it will be effects control displacement. If you have streak selected, you'll it'll call effects control streak. So it does it. So it does matter. Um, so, so it doesn't matter which one you have selected. All right. So we have our displacement. You want to go to effect, distort, and you want to go to turbulent displacement. Or you can just right click in the effects control, go to distort and turbulent displacement. Okay. This is a, another option. Now we're starting to see like the mooky gookie ness. We're, we're almost there. What you want to do is you want to go to our amount and size and just literally play around with it. Get the look that you want. Go to size and we scale it down and you scale it up. Increase the amount, increase the complexity to make it more noise, have more noise. Size, there we go. Amount, that's good. Okay, I like this look. Uh, we're, then we're gonna go to streak. We're gonna right click in our effects window, go to noise, and we're gonna go to fractal noise. And now we have a lot of like noise and that's good. Okay. It has, you have our texture. You want to go to contrast. You want to increase the contrast, right? And now we are seeing, okay, that blacks are blacks, whites are whites, and it looks like a really cool texture. And that's exactly what we want. All right. And you want it to have some personality. You don't want it to be bland where if it had no contrast at all, it's like, oh, what's that? Eh, no, let's just press control Z. And now we have our noise and we can go to transform scale. And if we were to scale it all the way down, it's basically a wide shot view of the noise. We don't want that. We want to zoom in and we'll see more detail. So something like that. I like, okay. Now we see that if we were to toggle the press on our toggle transparency grid, we see that our edges are a bit sharp, right? We don't want that. We don't want our edges to be sharp. Go here, press fit. So we're going to go to our streak, right click on our effects control window, go to blur and sharpen and Gaussian blur. Okay. And you want to increase the blurriness. Now, as you can see, when we increase the blurriness, it's blurring our fractal noise as well. We just want it to blur the edges. So you want to go to Gaussian blur and drag it above the fractal noise. And now, as you can see, we're getting those nice soft edges, which is what we got here. Okay, so after that, what we want to do is we want to highlight our streak, right click it, go to distort, and then go to twirl. And now if we fiddle around with the angle, we are now seeing that it's twirling. Increase the twirl radius like that, go to fit. And now we are getting a really nice twirl. Now our lines, or at least the main, the main twirl legs of our effect are tiny. So what you want to do is with your streak element selected, if we were to deselect the twirl and deselect the displacement and go and highlight our streak and go to our edges and, and go to our stroke, we can see we are literally increasing the stroke, right? And when we put everything back, right? Now our edges are actually, now our twirls are actually having some thickness and that's good. I'm just going to go to drop down options, transform and just scale it down. Like so. Uh, I'm just fiddling around with it. That's good. I like that. Now, what we want to do is you want to go to right click on the composition window, go to new and go to on, on the composition timeline, go to new and then go to solid. Okay. And you just want to call this 
center mat 1200 by 1200 make comp size click OK now our center mat is literally above everything we want to drag it between the displacement and the streak and what a center mat is essentially is whatever whatever this is like whatever is shown here whatever is non-transparent it's going to be a window to the bottom all right and so and so if i were to go to our streak go to alpha mat center mat it's going to make the center mat the alpha mat we are going to see everything however if we were to press none on that go back to our center mat and click on the and click on the toggle eye which 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 is you don't see me now you do see me what you want to do is you want to highlight our predefined shapes hover over your lips tool and let go of the left mouse button then double click and turn off displacement now it's a perfect circle now if you don't if you're not seeing any outlines of your layers you want to go you want to hold down control shift and H you want to, you want to hold down control shift on your keyboard and press H and now we're seeing the outlines um, I don't know what it is it, I've, been, I've been using let's see if we go to control shift H like I, I just been do, doing shortcuts for so long uh, I just don't know what it is oh wait control shift A. yes show layer controls so if we have like our layer selected control shift H click that we don't have we like we don't see the outlines of our layers if we go back to view show layer controls now we do but for a shortcut for that is control shift and then H all right so with our center mat selected right we we with with our white layer selected we actually double clicked on the ellipse tool and it created a perfect mask we see that it's kind of cutting off in our window so we're going to go here press fit and with our mask like that what we're going to do is you want to double click we want to highlight on our mask then double click on the mask itself in the composition window then while holding down control shift and alt we want to hover our cursor at the corner of, of the circle and then while holding down control shift off you want to hold and drag the cursor to the center and now the circle and now the, the circle is centering from the center that's good that's good just like that and the reason why we're not seeing everything displaced is because we have our displacement off so what we want to do now is, is what we did last time. We want to go to our track mat. And if you don't see this, you see this toggle switches and modes. This will toggle. It has different modes and sections. So we want to go to our track mat until we see the track mat section. On our streak, you want to go to, go to none. Then from none, you want to go to alpha mat. Now, as you can see, the circle that we made is sort of the window to the bottom. Now. If we want to invert this selection, we go to our streak, alpha mat, invert alpha mat, and now it's creating that center hole, which we see here. Now we see that's a little soft, it's a little harsh on the edges. So with our mask selected, you wanna to go to mask feather, and you wanna feather it. And that's the look that we want. You wanna go back to displacement, and now it's looking exactly like this. We got our effect. Okay, so we softened edges in the Gaussian blur. We made the we made our center mat. We have our displacement. The last thing I want to do is animate our displacement. Okay, so we're gonna use what we call expressions. And what you want to do is with your this displacement adjustment layer selected, you want to go to the turbo displacement in your effects window, hold down Alt, and then click on the stopwatch. Now this is kind of like a window where you kind of create code. Um, so what we want to do is you just want to backspace everything. You want to you want to type time, and then hold down Shift and 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 create the star time. It's it's on the number eight key, and then after that we have time time, and you want to type fifty. You want to click outside the box, and now what's going to do is it's going to, you know. Um, and it's 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 going to animate the the um, the evolution settings to infinity, you know, and in the pace what you set it at. So if we were to go to our, so if we were to preview this, go to our preview section. And if you don't see this, go to window 
and I go to preview and it'll appear right here and click on play as you can see it's nice it's 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 evolving and it looks cool now you can, now you can even go as far as to go into your streak right go into fractal noise and even evolving the fractal noise itself in fact if we were to do that right click alt click on the evolution tool go to times times 15 no no yeah 15 and then click on our preview settings or we can just click zero on our keep press zero on our keyboard and it's a really nice effect i like it i love it let's leave it at that okay now what we want to do next is you want to drag our streak element to our tut folder if you didn't make your own folder it's okay this is just the stuff that i made beforehand um, and this is what i'm working with now okay what you want to do is you want to make a new composition so we want to go to our create new composition and let's just make this bigger 1500 by 1500 let's call this main in all caps and we're going to have this be 30 seconds so 3000 zero, zero, zero. click outside the box and now we have uh, the duration of this next composition will be 30 seconds so this stands for milliseconds this stands for seconds this stands for minutes and hours never have I done a composition in After Effects where it was like more than one hour the close I don't know but okay we're gonna click OK and now we have an empty empty composition window we're gonna go to our main just drag it to our folder if you didn't make a folder you, you don't have to make a folder but if you want to you just go to our folder here create a new folder select it and just name whatever you want I'm gonna go to the folder which I just selected and click on that okay now what we want to do is we have we're in our main we're in our main composition right which we call main but in our but in our session we have streak element which is this right we want to drag our streak element into our main and now we see it it's nice it's inside it's in our layer okay now what we want to do next is go to our go go to our shape layers like go to our predefined shapes highlight the ellipse tool now with now with that selected with with the layer selected we see we have our fill and we have our stroke and our stroke the reason why it's at 214 is because our selection here is literally it's 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 it was it was it, the stroke was 214 when we um when we made it right so we don't want it to be 214 when we made this circle so with nothing selected, you just want to decrease the stroke, and now it's all the way to one. And then we want to double click on the circle, and now it is a perfect circle. Now go into our transform properties. We're going to go to scale. We just want to scale that. Okay? And we're going to call this base underscore green. You want to drag it below our street element. And this is going to label this green right and now we just want to see how big we want our streak element to be that looks good i like that i'm okay with that we'll leave it at that okay so we want to deselect our streak element we don't want to make it visible so i'm going to click off the eye boop i poke this eye out i want to go to our highlight our base screen go to effects it's effects controls go to noise then fractal noise, and now we have our noise. We're just, we're just gonna like zoom in. I'm just, I'm just using the mouse, the the middle mouse scroll. I'm just like zooming in. That's what I'm doing. So with now with our base screen selected, we go to our fractal noise, and we want to go to fractal type. We want to go to dynamic, or dynamic progressive. Okay. Then you want to go to invert. Looks like a really nice webby kind of energy thing. Next thing you want to do is want to go to our transform. We want to scale that in. We want to see the detail. However, it's very blurred. This may be the look you want, you, you want, but I like detail in mine. And I'm just going to increase the complexity. As you can see, it's literally increasing the detail. 
And if you were to like animate it, like like just mess with the evolve settings, it looks nice and it looks cool. And the thing is with noise, it's always random. It's just a random seat. You can just randomize it. It's so neat. Okay, I like this look, and we're gonna just leave it at that. Just to get things started, I'm just going to alt click on the stopwatch times times 50. Press zero on my keyboard to preview it. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Now I'm gonna to go to right click on our base screen and in our effects controls, go to blur, then go to Gaussian blur, drag our blur atop of the fractal noise, right? Control shift H to hide, to hide the, the layers, to hide the layer outline so I just see clearly. Increase the Gaussian blur and now the edges are a lot softer. Next thing you want to do is you just want to go to let's 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 just collapse our fractal noise. Right click in our base screen, go to color correction, tint, go to white, go to green, and as you can see we're coloring a green. And just like that, that's the green that I like. Click OK. We um have our streak element be visible again. And now we can see we're getting a look that we want. Okay. Now I'm just going to go to fit and we see everything. I'm just going to scale it here. Now let's say if I'm scaling, right, it's going outside the edges. What if I don't want that? Now, now I could be accurate and just say, okay, I want to stop it here. But when it's animating, there's a good chance that it may go outside the circle. Or let's say I do want it to be like this, but I don't want the edges to be seen outside the circle. How can I, what can I do? Well, what I can do, what we can do is go to our base screen and then duplicate that by going to edit and duplicate. And I'm just going to bring that over our streak element and highlighting both this new layer that, that, that we just made a copy of and our streak element. I'm going to label it orange, the color orange with our base screen. I'm just going to get rid of tint get rid of fractal noise and get rid of the gossip blur. Actually, no, I'm just going to decrease the gossip blur to around probably 13. I'm going to save it. Control S. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our streak element. No, I'm going to go to our base, our duplicated layer, press enter and call this. Sorry. Yeah. base mat call the streak element one and that's good now go to our track mat settings and from the none go to alpha mat and so now if we were to drag our streak element control shift h to see our layers if we were to drag our streak element as you can see it's literally not going to go anywhere now we are seeing that it is a little harsh Right, so I'm just gonna go to our base mat, increase the Gaussian blur, right. And I'm just gonna eye it and just drag it. Or I could just go to my align over here. If you don't see a line, go to window, align. And with my layer selected, I'm just gonna to go to center and then vertical center alignment. And now it's perfectly centered, okay? Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to go to our streak element one, right click, go to color correction, tint, go here and, uh, sorry. Then we want to go to the color green and we can play around with it. That's the green that I want. We're going to click okay. And we're going to go, and in our modes, we're going to go to add. And that's the look that I want, and I'm okay with this. Now, we said this is 30 seconds. I'll show you why in a second. So we're going to select everything again, streak element with the base mat, control D to, to, to duplicate, and now we have a duplicate of, of everything below, right? Of our, of our streak element with its mat, okay? I'm going to highlight the ones I just duplicated and just make that purple, just so we know which is which. Now I'm going to go to my streak element two, 
go to this drop down options and go to transform and rotation right i was going to rotate it and now we are getting a different look i also get a different look i am going to highlight both the streak element and the mat and just drag it i'm just going to drag i'm dragging i'm dragging just to get that different look and we see it's literally cutting off i'm just going to highlight this on on the layer itself and just drag it all the way to 30. And the reason why I have more time to drag is because we made our streak elements literally a minute and 20 seconds, and therefore we have a lot of room to play with. Okay, so um, maybe this is too much. I'm going to go to, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna have our streak element two selected, and while holding shift, I'm going to press on the plus and minus signs on my keyboard. And if you look where my cursor is, you'll see I'm changing to different blend modes. Now I'm just going through the thing and like, ooh, I like that. But as you can see, I'm just, I'm just going through what's good, what I like, and I don't know exactly what effect I'm going to get. It's literally just, you know, playing around with it. Um, I like this black, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to just, just hi I'm going to highlight both and just drag it at the bottom um, to a sub subtract. What I'm also going to do is let's see if I were to go to if if I if I were to press T on the element, which brings up the opacity. You can get to the opacity by going to the drop down options and going to transform opacity. But T on the keyboard just brings up the opacity by itself. I'm going to decrease the opacity, something like this. Or what I can do is increase the Gaussian blur. Let's see. Control copy for the Gaussian blur. Control V for the tint. There we go. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know. We're all just playing around with it, right? We're just gonna leave it like that for now. I'm going to duplicate this again, Control D. I'm gonna label this uh, cyan. Let's see. Gonna drag it some more. Like that. I'm gonna bring up scale. I'm gonna scale it by pressing S. And then after that, I'm gonna hold down shift and press T. No, sorry, press press rotation. Right? And then now I have my scale rotation opacity only. I'm gonna rotate it like so. And because we animated it before everything is being animated All right now I'm just gonna go to my streak element put that to screen right and now we're getting that really nice you know Rick and Morty look I may incre decrease the opacity on the streak element to be honest do that here I may go to soft light now that no, this makes it darker actually no it doesn't let's see soft light Let's call it notch now. Doesn't matter. Okay, that's good. I like the way this is looking. Um, what I'm going to do is create the edges, right? The white edges, what we see here. Okay, and how I did that is very simple. If we start from our base screen, I'm just going to control the duplicate and put and put the duplicate below. I'm just gonna call this base edges. Right? After that, I'm just going to deselect. I'm just I'm just going to like get get rid of the like just just go on it and press reset. Get rid of the fractal noise. Decrease the Gaussian blur. And, and if we go to control shift H, we're starting to see the white edge. But we want it to be a little harder than that. So it's gonna go to our Gaussian blur. And now we're starting to see it. Right, but I just want to make it a little thick, a little, just a little soft, and then now I'm just going to label this yellow. Try to go to scale. Now, as you can see, we have our edges here. Right. What you want to do next is you want to go to base green duplicate, and you just want to drag it at the bottom again. Go to scale, increase it. Reset on the Gaussian blur. There you go. Uh, 
That's good. Let's see. Yeah. Same effect ish. <laughs> That's fine. I'm okay with that. Okay. And what I want to do is want to go to base edges, control D again. Go to go to scale. Oops. Let me just redo that again. Perfect. Now, in order for the edges to be displaced, I'm just going to right click, go to adjustment layer, call this base displace. I'm going to drag it all the way to the bottom. Right, right click on, on the base displace effect window, go to the store, turn on displace, and now we're seeing it being displaced. Let's get the look that we want. Let's see, let's slice it down. It's not going to be the same, it, it's literally going to be different. Actually, that's pretty much the same thing. It's going to be different. I like this look. Times, times, let's see, 50. Preview it by clicking on the play button here. We're going to go to resolution f half. See how that looks. And I got to say, that looks pretty good. I like that. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to go to our streak element on our um, composition window and compress control D right and now we have two streak elements and we're just going to label we're just going to leave it at streak element two so I'm going to double click streak element two and delete our center map wait yeah wait what did I do right um take off I'm going to go I'm going to go to my streak element turn off track mat delete center mat Leave it like that. Then I may I'm just I just want to give it a different look. So may go to size. I'm definitely gonna go do it like that, increasing the opacity. I mean I mean increasing the increasing the complexity. I just want to give it a different look. Maybe increase the thickness. Definitely. Good. All right. Uh, let's see. If I were to go here to streak, uh, blur, vector blur, where is it? Thank you. Uh, do that. Let's see. Go to pendicular. Do that. Let's see how that looks. That looks cool. And this is just something I was not planning on for. I just want to just put more overlays on it. Okay. So after that, I'm just going to copy my tint color. Control copy. After that, I'm just going to go to my project. I'm going to drag streak element to. Oh, right. Sorry. I'm going to go to my main drag streak element to at the very top. Control V, and now it's green, right? Now what I want to do next is I just want to play around with the settings, over with the blend mode. So having that selected, Shift minus. There we go. That's what was that? Multiply. Let's make let's make a note of that. Soft light. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's adding some, that's adding a lot of detail. If we go to full, yeah, I like that. So, yeah, it's very subtle, but you know, I think it works. So let's uh, leave it like that. Let's um, control D again, bring that below everything. Uh, 
let's see. Like that. Which one is this? The purple? Oh, the purple is the darkened one. So I'm gonna go, so I'm gonna call this streak element two underscore darkness. There we go. Cool. And then after that, I still have that selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just highlight the streak element uh, two. I'm just playing around with What I can do is actually darken it. And you can't see it, but I'm going to increase the scale. Color dodge. Something like that. And so we're seeing something in the background. Control T. No. Let's leave it at normal. Decrease the, op decrease the opacity. I'm going to go to base mat 2, duplicate that. Highlight this, make this both uh, brown. Make that into the alpha mat, just in case I want to scale it. Doesn't look really weird. Uh, with our streak element two selected, I just want to go to blur, then vector blur. I just want to change it. I just want to make it its own thing. So you see how it's it's very like different. You know, it's just, it's just, it's very subtle. You really can't see it, but you will be able to tell in the details. And literally just with fiddling around, we, I think we got it. Now the only thing left to do is to make this baby glow. Okay. And everything's animated. So what we want to do is we want to right click, go to new. And go to adjustment layer and call this glow. Before anything, what you want to do is uh, let's see. Let's call this streak element two. Streak element two. Um, streak element two. It's just it's it's. There's so many names for it, but it is literally streak element two. So. Oh no, streak element. Streak element v.2, so version 2, because we already have streak element 1 and 2 from our very first streak element. Um, free to go here. Everything is organized. Everything is set. Let's glow this bad boy. You want to highlight glow, go to your effects, go to blur. Oh, God, it's 40 minutes. I'm sorry. I am sorry. I try this is the fastest I've gone. Thank God it's not an hour. Uh, go to blurriness. Increase the blur. Go to screen. Let's see. Put a background. Let's go to solid. Let's go to BG. Yeah, that's fine. Drag the background all the way to the bottom. So having a back background does like make the colors pop. Not really necessary sometimes, but I'm just gonna leave that as an option for you. <sighs> Let's see. Go to T. Something like that. Let's go to half. That looks pretty good. I like it. We are missing one thing, something I didn't realize. 
we're missing this, the center part. Okay, we're gonna go back to full. Now, you know, there is a lot of stuff here and I may wanna just change that a bit. So if I were to go, is that it? Or I go to scale. I'm just thinking on what to do because the circle in the middle is actually not big enough in my opinion. So I'm going to go back to my streak element and I'm going to increase the expansion. I want to have it like that. If I were to go that, if I go to main, yeah, now we're seeing the center a lot more. Okay. That's good. That's good. All right. Now I'm going to go to our scale. Let's see, have it like this. Hold that, press Control D to duplicate again. I'm gonna make this Furusha pink. Make it different. Scale. And there we go. Now it looks like the portal. Great, 42 minutes. I literally, I got close to the effect. In fact, I like this one better, I think. This one definitely has harsher edges. You can just make the edges harsher by going back to streak element, going to streak and literally turning this off. Yeah, so you see, before, after, before, after. It's literally up to you. But if you were to go to, uh, half and then animate this. Oh, sometimes that happens. Don't panic. Sometimes you you can press too fast on the RAM preview. But as you can see, we did the same process. We messed around with it and it looks great. And in fact, this, the one we just did, I think is more better than this. This looks more of like it's literally going in. This one looks like, okay, it's everywhere. And this was the preview that I showed you. So I gotta say, good job guys, good job. Yeah, that's a cool effect. I like it, I like it. All right, um, that, is, that is that for that tutorial. Like I said, this is my very first tutorial. Please forgive me for just rambling on. Uh, as you can see, it is a process. There were no predefined like settings. Um, it's just all about getting the look that you want. Um, I'm pretty sure, I'm 100% sure your look is way different, right? But if you just use the same process of you know messing around with, with, with the blending modes, uh, you know, fiddling around with the fractal noise and the turbulent displacement, you will get a really cool portal effect. It doesn't have to be just for this uh, this effect. It could be for anything, right? And so just the last tip, if we were to just go to our main and just duplicate that, right? We have our main. What we can do is we can uh, go to our streak. Let's make that blue, right? Let's make that blue. Control tint. And with everything selected, control V, now it's all blue. If we were to go to our base green here, let's just have that be blue, right? Have that be a darker blue. Have one of the elements be more white than blue. Let's see, what's this one? Ooh, that's nice. 
that's nice. Shift. Exactly, I had it last time. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Very cool. And, uh, let's see, one more. Let's make this, uh, yeah. And that's out. That's it. I like this. It's really nice and it's sweet and it's different look. So, just by making a few adjustments, we went from this to this and uh yeah have fun play around i hope this helps i hope you like it thank you for watching please subscribe right here subscribe subscribe right here have some fun if you have any questions please let me know and i will answer to the best of my abilities again if you stuck along for this long thank you you are the true mvp and I will see you guys next time with a new video. Maybe a tutorial. It may be a skit. But trust me, there is going to be content here every week. Okay, I graduated from college. I am good and ready to go. I'm looking for a job now. I'm broke, but it's not going to stop me from doing videos. So thank you guys again, and I will see you next time. Cheers.